her heart rate is what sent me running to the emergency room. I knew something was wrong. Right away, I saw she had a look on her face like she was in pain. I called her name and she didn't respond to me and she was just still making the noises. And then I saw she just started looking up and she just wasn't blinking. She was just looking straight up. Sandra called me and I answered the phone. I said, so how she's doing? And she's just like hysterical. And she's like, they don't think she's gonna make it. And I said, what do you mean? And then she told me that she went into cardiac arrest twice. We were all standing there and just out of the blue as if it was a godsend. And I know that it was. Dr. Dapian, he tapped me on my shoulder. I woke up in the middle of the night with like a, felt like a crook in my neck. Didn't really pay attention to it, just kind of tried to go back to sleep, toss and turn a lot through the night. And woke up, went to work. Throughout the day, it started to go down my right side and I knew something was wrong. I went to the emergency room and I was just told that it was a strained muscle. I was out of work for about two days when my mom finally was like, we need to go back because nothing's changing. Because my mom had a blood clot, they decided, well, we're just going to check you. And never in my dream did I think they would come back and say what they said and said that I had blood clots in my lung. Brittany had a, what we call massive pulmonary embolism. It's a condition when a clot travels through the venous circulation to the heart and then from the heart goes into the pulmonary arteries and occludes the blood flow into the pulmonary arteries. If the flow is occluded in the pulmonary arteries, then blood cannot be delivered to the lungs to get oxygenated and patients will die. Last thing that I remember is my blood pressure and my pulse going down like dramatically. A part of the strategic plan of St. Francis Hospital was to bring high quality care to the citizens of Columbus and, and surrounding area. Out of that uh, plan grew the decision to affiliate with Emory University. American Heart Association in uh, consort with many other professional organizations is on the forefront of research and they provide support, they provide funding for uh, research into these life-threatening conditions. Over many years, the mankind basically benefited from the efforts of American Heart Association. The other aspect of, American, uh, of the importance of American Heart Association is dissemination of this information to the public. Informed public is, is uh, its own best advocate. If they know what to expect, if they know, if they have appropriate information, then they can direct their attention to being treated earlier. If they are treated earlier, there is higher chance that they are going to survive. So the uh, efforts of American Heart Association are absolutely indispensable in, in furthering our knowledge, in taking care of patients, and, and improving results, improving survival of these patients. I'm just so grateful, I mean, with the research that the American Heart Association is doing and the, the strides that they're making. You know, I can honestly say that it pays off. I know a lot of times people ask, donate, contribute, but I will honestly say you never know when it might be you. You can never say it's not going to it's not going to touch you or someone you love. You just never know. From what I know, people don't really survive that that often, so I'm very, very thankful to be here today and to share my story and hopefully it'll inspire someone somewhere else and know that, you know, just have faith in God through it all. I'm thankful for Dr. Daphne every day. I felt like he was sent down <laughs> for a reason. Um, like you said, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. The only way to save the patient's life in that condition is to, to operate emergently. And we were able to get to her just in time.